Thanks for tuning in to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. You know, when we're talking about prepay, everybody's interested in the herbicides and, all right, well, uh, do I buy it now or do I buy it later and what's the discount going to be? But they forget to talk about seed sometimes and the prepay return on investment, buying your seed early is important. So we're going to talk about that on today's show. Well, you know, another thing I think people forget to prepay for, but heck, they forget to even use it, is sulfur. We wanted to talk today about the importance of using sulfur on your farm and if you need it at all, depending on your crop. Well, we've got another difficult to control weed of the week that we'll show you how to wipe out on your farm. But first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. In our Farm Basics today, we're going to talk about terraces, what they are, and why farmers put them in their fields. So like right now, for example, Darren and I are standing on some slope here. I'm standing a little bit downhill from Darren, but it's not a lot of slope here. When we get into steeper slopes, that's where farmers are using these terraces. And basically, this is an age old practice where people put in blocks. Basically, they build up soil. So water will not wash their soil all the way down the hill. It'll only wash it part of the way down there. Well, it's kind of like a dam, Brian. <laughs> you know, you're, you're just yep. going to try and slow things down as it's moving downhill. And you can obviously put in more terraces, Brian. You don't have to wait till halfway down the hill to put one in. You can put in a system of several terraces on the way down the hill. The important thing, though, as farmers are putting in terraces, it's not just, well, we'll just pile up dirt, you know, whatever which way it works. No. They have to be very careful about the level of that soil so they don't have a blowout, so they don't have water running around one edge and tearing into the side of the hill that way. They have to be real strategic when they're placing these terraces in. The other thing that farmers are doing now compared to what they did 20 or 30 years ago is now they're doing drainage tile underneath the soil in addition to doing terraces to help more of that water soak down through the soil rather than running off the top. One question that a lot of non-farmers have about terraces is, where does this dirt come from that you're building the terrace with? There are different styles of terraces. For example, on some of our land, we have what's called push-up terraces, where you farm on the top side, but you do not farm on the bottom side of that slope. You have some of those uh, even on some of your ground, don't you, Darren? Yeah, and they'll basically just take the soil, push it up to make that terrace. And yeah, you're going to have a, a nice terrace there, but right below it, You've robbed a lot of the good topsoil and you may not have as good well, a crop not necessarily. just underneath it. Not necessarily, because what some people will do if they're going to go to this work is they'll pull the topsoil off, then they'll push the subsoil clay up to make that terrace, then they'll put the topsoil back. That's the proper way to do it. Now there are some terraces that were done on our farm back oh, probably 70 years ago now, where it wasn't push-up terraces. It was really not that steep a slope. So there was just a little bit of ridge there. And basically there's another thing that goes along with terraces. It's called farming on the contour. That means farming around the hill instead of up and down the hill. And when you're gonna put terraces in, whether it's push-up or just regular terraces like some that we have on our farm, where it's not so steep, either way, you're gonna be farming around these hills. It is a little bit more work. It takes more time. It's one of the things I give Darren a hard time about. It takes us twice as long to farm his ground than anything else. But you do this practice of putting terraces in and farming around the contour and you are able to save soil. Well, and that's the big thing because you look back uh, 20, 30, 40 years ago and the practices that farmers had to do to control weeds and to manage residue and these types of things with the equipment they had uh, and the herbicides that they had and these kind of things, they pretty much had to do some tillage in a lot of situations where they otherwise would choose not to. Today's farming practices, there's a lot less tillage going on in these more highly erodible areas. Farmers are implementing no-till or strip-till techniques to preserve that soil, hold it in place. But the other side of that is, if they do less tillage, farmers can increase the organic matter in their soils, which will help soak in more water on the top of the hill and coming down the sides of the hill, and they have a lot less erosion than we had just a few decades ago. Well, once again, these terraces are an important thing on farms from decades ago and even today on the modern farm, even in no-till and strip-till practices, adding terraces to a field that has a lot of slope can really help. Well, one other thing that can really help improve your field production is controlling our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to control this tough weed later in the show. You can't fill a barrel any fuller than its lowest stave. And your crops can't do any better than the nutrient that's in shortest supply. Your yield potential is only as good as the weakest nutrient in your fertilizer program. 
give your crops more than just MPK. Prescription apply all the micronutrients your crop needs. Each one customized for your crop's potential. Microlink, linking yield to potential. Harvest season will soon be over, but don't put away your equipment until you bring it into Titan Machinery, your Case IH dealer. Take advantage of our Uptime Maintenance Program. Uptime is Titan's preventative maintenance service designed to eliminate costly downtime during the short working season. Our technicians average more than 10 years of experience and use a comprehensive checklist to find problems before they slow you down. Call Titan Machinery today to schedule your Uptime service so you can spend the winter worry-free. Titan Machinery and Case IH, better solutions. Looking to maximize yield? QuickRoots is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. QuickRoots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more. QuickRoots is applied to the seeds so the live microorganisms go right to work, enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients, including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your local dealer and get your quick roots today. Speed, strength, and efficiency make Capello corn heads a head above the rest. Built with polymer components that exceed industry standards, Capello corn heads continue to push the boundaries for maximizing grain retention while using less energy. Visit CapelloUSA.com and learn more about Capello's state-of-the-art chopping technology that cuts cleaner, allowing your horsepower to remain where it belongs, with your combine, so you can harvest faster in all weather conditions. Add to that an amazing folding feature and it's clear to see why Capello is a head above the rest. Everything is better to the power of Nutrisphere N. Nutrisphere N. Proven to shield against leaching, volatilization, and denitrification, Nutrisphere N Nitrogen Fertilizer Manager helps you maximize the efficiency of your nitrogen applications. In fact, research shows that in 184 corn trials, Nutrisphere N increases yields by an average of 13.2 bushels per acre. Per acre. Do the math for yourself. Contact your local fertilizer dealer today and take your operation to the power of Nutrispherin. Well, the next thing we wanted to get to today is sulfur. We wanted to discuss sulfur because everybody, Darren, talks about NPK, 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 and we find that most farmers are doing a fairly decent job, especially with nitrogen. But when it comes to sulfur, it's not a micronutrient, it's a secondary nutrient. Plants need a lot of sulfur, especially crops like corn here. I mean, in this residue, in these stalks, there's all kinds of sulfur. If you're gonna have a great crop, especially a grass crop like corn or wheat, you've got to have sulfur. Well, there's also a good amount of sulfur in the organic matter in your soil, so it's important to consider this residue and the importance of it as you move into future crops. Now, when we talk about sulfur, one of the other things I find, Brian, is a lot of guys will do trials on their farm. You know, on one piece of ground, I'm gonna put a little more nitrogen, or I'm gonna put a little more phosphorus, or a little more potassium, and yeah, you know, sometimes they see a gain if they weren't quite managing that program as well as they should have been, but the one that I see the biggest gains from, from a lot of guys has been sulfur. They say, wow, I put some more sulfur on, and man, did that make a difference. Okay, you've probably heard us say this on Ag PhD before, but the main reason why we're having big issues as far as sulfur goes, in our opinion at least, is that as farmers, we didn't used to have to fertilize with sulfur because our yields were a lot less and we were getting free sulfur from air pollution. Well, unfortunately, our air is pretty clean now, Darren. Unfortunately, so. <laughs> I think it's a pretty good deal we've got clean air. And you yeah, know, I prefer the, to live a few years longer yeah, and but spend the, a little more on The point on is, it costs us money now, well, so we have to spend money on sulfur. But fortunately, there are a number of ways you can get sulfur on our farm. Let's talk about some of the ways we get it in our own operation. Manure is probably number one. Where we can put manure on, that's great. We get some sulfur and fairly high doses of sulfur, depending on what type of manure you're getting. We use dairy manure on our own farm, but that's one of my favorite things. Well, that's one of the big things with fertility, and, and a lot of it comes down to where you're at and what are the sources that are close by to you. Now, there are also some close sources for us of ammonium sulfate, and ammonium sulfate's a great way to get a good form of nitrogen out there, ammonium, but also to get that sulfate out on our ground. So we're getting kind of two things that we know we need all in one shot and in a great form for the plant availability. On some of our ground, we worry about flooding every spring, and so we never put nitrogen on in the fall, we put it on in the spring. We like to do it then with liquid nitrogen most of the time, and if you're going to put liquid nitrogen out we always encourage you to put some form of sulfur along with it. That will help stabilize that nitrogen a little bit. So on some of our ground, we're using the liquid product. I like a liquid product called Access. Uh, there are other liquid products out there that you could use as well. You could use something like ammonium thiosulfate also. 
Uh, so you have to look at, at all your choices on the liquid side and, and find out what's going to work best for you. But you can certainly do it. It's an easy way to mix it right in with liquid nitrogen. Now one other form that you may not have given a lot of thought to is when you're putting lime out there, depending on what kind of lime you're getting. So on our farm, for example, we get lime out of wastewater treatment facilities and quite often there is some sulfur in there. Now I'm not saying there are dramatic amounts or anything, but on our farm we're putting on six tons per acre of lime in some some cases while well, we're getting more than enough sulfur for the next year in that particular application. So you got to look at all these different forms and and just like I said, you know, even just in our operation, we have four, sometimes even five different forms, different ways to get that sulfur out there. So you have a lot of opportunities on your farm to get this important nutrient into your ground. Like you say, lime is calcium carbonate. So you don't normally think of that as being a sulfur source. What many people do when they're looking at calcium is calcium sulfate, which is known as gypsum. Now gypsum is a good source of sulfur for your ground and it just depends on what you have in your area, whether you've got a local source of gypsum, because trucking can get to be an issue if you've got to put on a ton or more onto certain types of ground to try and manage some of the soil factors you have. One of the big reasons why we're talking about sulfur today is it's something you need to fertilize with every single year in pretty much every crop you've got, because every crop is going to use some sulfur. You can just go to the Ag PhD website. We've got information there under the resources tab. We also have an app that you can download to your iPhone. It's called the Fertilizer Removal app from Ag PhD to look at how much sulfur you actually need but the thing you got to keep in mind with sulfur is it leaches just like nitrogen so you wouldn't even consider planting corn or wheat without putting nitrogen on every single year it's the same thing with sulfur sulfur is going to leach just as easily as nitrogen will well and that's a good way to think about it Brian when you look at sulfur applications for the most part guys are going to try and do those in the spring because we've got a leaching potential so if you could do it in the spring that would be ideal the other thing is I really like putting it with nitrogen for a couple of reasons. The main one being when you have good available sulfur for your plants, they are more efficient using their nitrogen. And that's really the biggest one for me. When I look at our plants and you say, well, man, I'm spending so much money on the nitrogen that my corn crop or my wheat crop needs. If I could put some sulfur with it and also maximize the sulfur, you can get by perhaps with a little bit less nitrogen. Or if you leave your nitrogen rate the same, perhaps you can be more efficient and also raise more yield. One other thing I wanted to mention about sulfur, Darren, is that if I see a soil test that has really high levels of sulfur, that tells me generally that we have a poor drainage issue because again sulfur will leach away under good drainage conditions so if you're sitting there with 100 200 parts per million of sulfur again most of the time i just figure oh boy we've got an issue with drainage we better solve that problem out there get some tile done do whatever you have to to fix that drainage issue because sulfur can become toxic just like most nutrients can become toxic if the levels get too great so that's not a good thing oh and one other thing when you talk about uh, a place where sulfur could actually be a negative uh, in the furrow is also one of those places. I like to put a lot of my nutrients right in the furrow with, with some of the safer sources of liquid fertility that we're using, but sulfur is not one of those things. You may be able to get by with a hint of sulfur, but you can't put very much safely in but the But you furrow. don't have to ban sulfur either. You know, it's not like P and K where you really want it exactly where it needs to be. Sulfur is going to move around a little bit in the soil. It can leach and stuff, so it's not as important to ban sulfur anyway. Hey, the other thing I was thinking about too, Brian, is when we talk about putting nitrogen out with sulfur, on our farm in our reduced tillage situations, we a lot of times like to put our liquid nitrogen out as the carrier for our pre-emerge herbicides, and we're spraying those out across the field. Mixing some sulfur in there really helps with that burn down as well, so that's another real positive of mixing that sulfur with the nitrogen. Well, once again, sulfur is an extremely important nutrient for your farm. Just make sure you're keeping an eye on this thing. Uh, like I said earlier, unfortunately, we don't have air pollution too much anymore, Darren, so we're not, we're, you're not getting your sulfur for free like you used to, so you may need to be fertilizing with this every single year. Well, one other thing you'll have to watch out for every year is our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? Advanced farming systems from Case IH helps producers be ready. Our precision farming solution is less complex and built right into our equipment. Factory integrated with open architecture, AFS works with all of your implements, no matter what color they are. And our team of dedicated specialists are here to keep you rolling 24-7, 365. The world of farming is changing. Will you be ready? I'm ready. Hey Brian, it's Farm Guy. What brings you to our farm? 
I watch Ag PhD every week and know that you guys do a lot of field testing. We test a lot of products here and when something works, we use it on our farm. Oh, like agriculture liquid fertilizers. Yeah. You guys started talking about ProGerminator and SureK on the show a few years ago. But I was skeptical. You're always skeptical. Should Brian be skeptical of agro liquid fertilizers? Find out at www.farmguytv.com. For years, FarmLogic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit FarmLogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. For lower costs and higher production, see your Mandaco dealer. Ask about the best production-built land roller on the market. Mandaco, simple design for easy transport and easy use. 12 to 62 foot widths, heavy-duty 4x8x3 8 inch tube frame, and now available with a steerable wing wheel. Mandaco land rollers, improve soil to seed contact, faster, more uniform germination, less moisture loss. Eliminate downtime due to rocks. See your Mandaco dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call 877-915-8790. Looking to maximize yield? Quickroots is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. Quickroots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more. Quickroots is applied to the seeds so the live microorganisms go right to work, enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients, including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your local dealer and get your quick roots today. All right, Brian, everybody gets excited about prepaying for fertilizer and even herbicides, but sometimes guys let the seed go until last. Well, seed is probably the most important thing for you to prepay for on your farm, not just because of you know this great prepaid discount you're going to get but it is probably the best in the industry but besides that it's seed supply so as i'm sure you're well aware seed supply here in the fall of 2012 is not real good in fact i was just talking to one of the largest seed companies in the world today met with a couple of their people and we were discussing the seed supply thing and i said well how, how are you working this because all your seed sellers out there they want to earn more money and the only way they can earn more money is selling more product yet you don't have more product to give them <laughs> and they said no no don't believe all the stories that you're hearing across the board we should have 15 to 20 percent more seed than what we did even last year well the problem so is it's just good. not exactly what you want that's yes. that's always the challenge who knows what that hot number is going to be or which number is going to perform the best this year because chances are demand for that's going to be a little higher than what they may have anticipated. So we wanted to get into this prepay discussion first of all. What is the prepay percentage that you're going to get? Now every one of these companies is a little different so I'll just give the quick example of let's say you could get an 8% discount off your seed and you have to pay for your seed when you receive it and let's call that April 1st. Let's say you're shooting for starting planting in April sometimes you have to get the seed by April 1st. So if you look at December 1st to April 1st, that's four months. Okay, if you got an 8% discount on an APR basis, that would be 24% APR. Now, as you may or may not be aware, that's slightly better than you'll get putting your money in the bank right now. Well, just buy a hair brain. <laughs> so anyway, this is one of the things we look at on our farm, and our dad used to talk about it too, that you know, it's so important to work hard every day and you want to make money with your back basically. But he also said, you've got to make money with your pencil. And if you run the pencil and you figure out, hmm, I'm borrowing money right now for two or 3% APR and I can go out and give somebody else the money and get 24% APR, even if it's only over four months, I want to absolutely do that. Well, that's, that is a pretty good investment. The, the other thing about that, Brian, is you're not just getting seed nowadays. In many cases, especially with soybeans and wheat, you're also getting the seed treatment. And it's important to look at what your seed treatment cost is going to be. For example, in soybeans, many people are using an Acceleron or a Cruiser Max or Innovate or one of these complete seed treatments where they're getting insecticide, maybe a biological agent in there, also a couple of fungicides, and it costs somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 bucks. Maybe it's 12 bucks or 13 bucks or something like that. But let's just say it's 10 for today's example. And let's say that the discount on ordering the seed treatment early is $1 off per unit. Well, $1 off a $10 treatment 
that's 10%, Brian. 10% in four months, well, that's 30% APR. Yeah. Now, I, I see a lot of farmers that will prepay the seed, and they'll say, ah, oh, we'll figure out that seed treatment later. What are you going to figure out? You already know that it pays. You know that you're going to do it. Well, if you can get a 30% APR on that, or even if it's 24%, the same as the seed, which many companies do, that's a fantastic return on investment. Prepay for that as well. Well, a lot of this stuff, it obviously isn't rocket science. You've been farming for years, probably. You're familiar with all these discounts and everything else. One of the biggest pushbacks I get from farmers is people will say, well, I don't know for sure what I'm going to plant, so I hate to prepay. And guess what? Nobody in the seed companies even knows for sure if they're going to be able to deliver all the seed that you ordered. Unfortunately, that's the way the seed business is. They're dealing with living, breathing organisms. It's not like egg chemicals where they can just turn the plant on and run you out some more stuff. They're trying to produce seed, and before they can produce that seed, they've got to have the inbreds, like in, in the case of corn. And in order to do that, they've got to go way back to the breeder stuff, and everything's got to work all together and you have, can't have a whole bunch of problems with production or anything else. In 2012 we had drought, 2011 we had flooding. There have been a lot of problems so I know that there are a lot of seed companies right now that are going to come out and have this discussion with you that well I know you ordered your seed two months ago but we can't deliver this we're going to switch you out to another variety. I don't have that big of an issue with it as long as yield's going to be fairly similar. What I worry about is the disease side of it. So if I had Goss's Wilt, for example, and I don't get a Goss's Wilt hybrid, now I've got a major problem. So just make sure you're looking for the disease or the defensive package. That's probably the most important thing. Well, once again, we believe it's very important to be prepaying your seed, not just to get that great discount, but also to make sure you've got supply locked in going into this next year. And yes, there are probably going to be some switch outs, but the point is you've got to get some seed locked in and why not take advantage of a great APR discount. About the only other drawback, Darren, that I can think of is just making sure that you're working with a good dealer, somebody who's going to be there because, you know, you're putting your money out and you're not going to get your seed for a few months. So just make sure you're working with someone you can trust. Now, one other thing you'll need to work with someone you can trust on is weed control, especially if you have this week's weed. I'll show you how to get under control coming up next. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Mandaco. For lower costs and higher production, Mandaco leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. See your Mandaco dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call 877-915-8790. Our weed of the week is field pennycress. This is a really important weed for you to control on your farm because it's a winter annual. Well, when we have weeds that get a start in the fall, the best time of year to control them is in the fall. If you see them up in your fields, wipe them out now. Now, maybe you already have some snow in your area and you say, well, the snow is taking care of that. <laughs> no, it's not. It's actually insulating for them and protecting them a little bit. You may want an open winter to try and kill some of that stuff off. But either way, if you're going to have some of them in the spring, so you have to get out there early. So I look at crops like alfalfa as being particularly sensitive because I know there's not going to be any tillage out there. And a lot of guys don't like to spray things before they get that first cutting off. So change your plans up a little bit. Spray before the first cutting. Spray something like Pursuit or Raptor. It does a nice job on pennycress if you get out there early in the season. Yeah, but the whole problem is, like you said, it's got a good start real early in the season. So if if in your area it's still warm enough to do some burn down, a good shot of Banvel or 2,4-D will usually take care of pennycress in the fall. And you can also use those products in the spring in a burn down before corn. We've done that on our farm where we'll use Banvel, for example, go out with a pint of Banvel in a pre-plant burn down. That really does a number on pennycress. Well, when we get out into wheat crops, this is another place where we see some of the pennycress popping up early. If we're using something like Husky or if we're adding one of the addition products in with Wide Match, uh, that does a lot to broaden the spectrum of weed control yeah. and, and clean up that pennycress in your fields. Fortunately, in corn and soybeans, if it's Roundup ready crops, we don't have a lot of problem because Roundup is still doing a very nice job on pennycress. Well, but, really, Liberty does too, Brian. Yep. If you're in Liberty Link yep. crops, it's going to do a nice job on that pennycress. But again, get out there early because it's going to get some size to it and it's going to impact the plants you're trying to grow around it. Yeah, what I would do in corn if Roundup wasn't working or if I couldn't use Roundup or Liberty, status would be my preferred choice. In soybeans, you know, Pursuit does have some activity. There's nothing that's going to be perfect on pennycress in my book, though. Well, the other thing about pennycress, Brian, is it's one of my least favorite weeds, and not because it has stickers <laughs> or thorns, but it just stinks. 
And when you've got a patch of pennycress out in a field, I can smell it as soon as I open the door of my pickup. I don't want that around on my farm. So get field pennycress under control. Yeah, we used to control it in shelter belts with 2,4-D, and now I know, Darren, why you were telling me, go spray that stuff all the time. Oh, it smells <laughs> terrible. Well, once again, our Weed of the Week is field pennycress. That's it for our Weed of the Week. But stay tuned, Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. Advanced farming systems from Case IH helps producers be ready. AFS is less complex and built right into our equipment. And our team of dedicated specialists are here to keep you rolling. The world of farming is changing. Will you be ready? How do you know if you're doing a good job strip tilling? We'll talk about it in today's Iron Talk. One thing I look for in our fields when we're building that strip till berm is to actually have a berm. We've seen some machines that have not been set up properly and they're actually leaving a depression where that strip till machine is run through. What you actually would like to see is a little berm that sits a few inches up above the ground. Now that's going to settle down over the winter so you don't have to worry, oh boy, I'm gonna have these great big mounds. No, it'll settle down for the most part over the winter. But now you've got this spot that's high, dry, and dark soil to warm up quicker in the spring. That's how you know you have a successful berm built with your strip till machine. So check your fields this fall. If they're not building a good berm, make some adjustments, take some time, stop for a day or two if you need to, make those adjustments so you have a nice berm waiting for you next spring. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. Back in 1966, Advanced Drainage Systems, Inc. was the first company to start manufacturing plastic agricultural drainage pipe in the United States. And today, ADS continues our leadership with superior pipe production and service capabilities. Our roots are firmly entrenched in the agriculture industry, and we're committed to helping farmers grow their business. With 54 manufacturing plants and 24 distribution yards throughout the world, you can count on ADS and our green striped pipe to be there when you need us. Advanced Drainage Systems, the green striped pipe you can count on. Everything is better to the power of Nutrisphere N. Proven to shield against leaching, volatilization, and denitrification, Nutrisphere N Nitrogen Fertilizer Manager helps you maximize the efficiency of your nitrogen applications. In fact, research shows that in 184 corn trials, Nutrisphere N increases yields by an average of 13.2 bushels per acre. Do the math for yourself. Contact your local fertilizer dealer today and take your operation to the power of Nutrisphere N. For lower costs and higher production, Mandaco leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Twister's ease of maintenance is forgiving in rocks and has contour conformity equaling zero downtime. Our hydraulically adjusted coulter angles make residue management easier and less costly. Spring or fall, the Mandaco Twister vertical tillage unit is the new leader. See your Mandaco dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call 877-915-8790. farming systems from Case IH helps producers be ready. Our precision farming solution is less complex and built right into our equipment. Factory integrated with open architecture, AFS works with all of your implements, no matter what color they are. And our team of dedicated specialists are here to keep you rolling 24-7, 365. The world of farming is changing. Will you be ready? I'm ready. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. Introducing the all new Backsaver Swing Hopper Auger Mover. Backsavers have interchangeable parts which allows you easy access to move or swing your augers to fit your harvesting needs. Get yours today at Norwood Sales. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's show, but be sure to tune in again next time for another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Can you increase your field's topsoil layer by reducing tillage, planting high residue crops, utilizing cover crops, and adding manure to the soil? Topsoil can be rebuilt. For more information, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.